Problem 3. You charge a parallel plate capacitor, remove it from the battery, and prevent the wires connected to the plates from touching each other. When you increase the plate separation, do the following quantities increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, so let's get some con concepts down in life. I'm going to start by drawing a picture, which is what I try to do most times in life. Sometimes I fail, but sometimes I don't, which is nice. Nope. Go away, Mr. V. All right. Copy, paste. There we go. I got this. Then I'm going to draw a battery as well. So line, 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 up, 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 up. There we go. This will be the positive side. And this will be the negative side. So the idea here is, I like to use the hydraulic analogy. So the idea is, if this was a, these were pumps and this was a diaphragm, this would push a whole bunch of water here. It stores energy over on this plate. And it takes energy from this plate. So what it does is it's similar to having a diaphragm. It looks like this. And it gets pushed by the water so it stretches. It stretches from its normal position this direction. And that's kind of what we got here. Well, then they say they remove it from the battery. So, wait a second, do I have an eraser? Do I have an eraser? Is that an eraser? Maybe. Shazam. Ooh, that was a little more excessive than I thought. <sighs> okay. Die. Die. All right. So then we remove it from the battery. And it would be the same idea as if it, this pipe here, you just isolated the pipe. And therefore, the pressure would be locked in, if you will. So now we have these two plates that are charged. OK? So capacitance. Hmm. It prevents the wires from connecting. We need to increase the plate separation. All right. So first thing I'm going to think of is um, the formula for capacitance. So first thing you should think of is C equals Q over V, which is good, but of limited use to you. So the formula you really need here is the formula for parallel plate capacitors. So what we're going to do then, mm, darn you dot, all right, is capacitance equals epsilon, kind of like a backwards three, A, there we go, over D. Where this epsilon right here, it's not epsilon naught, it's really epsilon naught times epsilon r, where epsilon r has to do with the dielectric. But if they say uh, with air, then it's just going to be um, uh, epsilon naught. If the dielectric is there, then epsilon equals epsilon naught, which is what you'll do most of the time. All right, so they say that the distance increased between the two, so I'm going to do some arrow analysis. Hope this goes up. Therefore, mm, that's a terrible arrow. Therefore, capacitance lowers. Yep, capacitance will go down. Because when you get a bigger number on bottom, you get a um, smaller number overall. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. So, decreases. All right, Char Q. How does Q change? All right, this is almost a trick question. So, there's these plates which have charge carriers on them, which are either positive charges or negative charges. Or a more accurate way to look at it in life is electrons or lack of electrons. But I'm going to say positive and negative charges just because it's more intuitive that way. So the only way that they can travel is through a conductor. There's no conductor attached to these plates. The wire has been removed or isolated. Let's see. Touching each other. Battery and prevent the wires connected to the plates from touching each other. OK? Let's make sure I'm not reading this. It's now removed from the batteries. R removed from the battery. OK? So these charges are on the plates. So it doesn't matter where you move the plates, the charges are still going to stay there. So here, 
Q, which is the measure of charges, i.e. measure of electrons, will stay the same. So unless you get like some arcing and dielectric breakdown and electrons flying through the air, you know, traditionally what you think of here is unless you connect the wire, the, uh, uh, all the charges will stay on the plates. E, the energy between the plates. Mm -hmm. Now just intuitively here, I'm going to think of it as you have these two plates that are attracted to each other. So if we move the plates further away from each other, which it's going to, they're going to be attracted to each other. So if you pull them apart, it's going to be like there's a spring between them pulling them together. And if you pull that spring further, there's going to be uh, more potential energy in that spring. So if you pull the plates apart from each other, it's going to create more energy. Because, you know, just these two plates, they want to smash into each other, you pull them apart, and you let go, and they're going to smash each other. And if you just let go when they're close together, they'll kind of smash each other. If you pull them apart, they'll smash each, smash each other even harder. Therefore, the harder smashing will be an increase in energy. So now that I have an intuitive idea of what's going on in life, let's see if I can actually prove that in any meaningful sense. So we have electrical uh, energy equals 1 half CV squared, which is sort of useful. But they ask us what voltage is in the next one, so we don't really know what voltage is yet. Okay. So let's say then that instead, um, voltage equals, hmm, all right? So voltage equals Q over C. OK, just rearrange the equation. Q over C. Now I just got to remember that for like three seconds. One half C. Q over C. This will be squared, which will give us one half. Let's see when the C's will cancel, so we'll get Q squared on top over a C on the bottom. Okay, let's see if this makes sense. All right, so Q stays the same, so Q doesn't matter. So all that's going to matter here is C. So we know that C lowers, decreases. So it'll go like this. Therefore, when you get a, oh, I'm going to draw a stays the same arrow on top. So then we know that for the energy, it will go up. Because we have a smaller number in bottom, the overall equation will go up. Same for the same reason that 1 over 2 is smaller than 1 over 1. All right. Now, oh, sorry, I should have actually answered the question. Bam, increase. All right. So now, difference in voltage. OK, so intuitively, potential has to do with energy. So whatever energy does, potential will do as well. So looking at this. Hmm. We can't really do anything with this equation here because we're going to have C going down, but voltage going up. And it kind of depends on how much each of them goes up or each of them goes down. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to now rearrange this guy again so that, oh, we already know that C equals Q over V. Got it. Score. All right. This is probably a terrible boardsmanship. But we know that C equals Q over V. Q over V, we have a V squared, we cancel out the squaring, and we get QV, QV over 2. Bam. We know that Q stays the same. We know that energy goes up. Hmm, that was a terrible energy. Energy goes up, therefore, Voltage has to go up. Bam, there we go. And now we have delta V, the voltage increases. All right, that seems reasonable. And that's all we do with this question. All right, on to number four.